all. Yeah. I was I was looking at who can make an oral will. Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, soldiers in actual service and mariners at sea. <laughs> actual service and mariners at sea. Mariners at sea. It it looks like soldiers and those that are mariners uh, actually have a little different law structure than those. A person in active military service or mariners may dispose of his personal state as he might have a com at common law. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't, I don't really have access to what military law says about um, violating the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> but let's say you're a soldier and. The possibility of imminent death. <laughs> You're out there with some other soldiers. Usually there's more than one of them at a time. It might be a whole division, a battalion. I don't know the exact number of soldiers that actually work together. Yeah. You're out there fighting a war and you say, Well, if I die, I want my wife and kids to have everything that I own. <laughs> and as does happen during war, the guy gets shot in the head and he's dead. Boom. Gone. And uh, they they take his body back to the United States and they bury him. He's got one of these nice soldier funerals and everything. Well, his widow says, well, well, what what was his last will? What did he want to have happen to his personal items? And the guys that he was fighting the war with, they they show up in some sort of military court and he said, no, before he got shot, he said, give his wife and kids everything he owns. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's say I'm an American citizen, right? Because I proved that. I provided my social security number, my driver's license. In fact, I provided every available document that I have to prove my actual United States citizenship. Yes. In fact, I'd send an email, well, what if I die? <laughs> and then I inform law enforcement and those elected to office and those that are attorneys and judges and justices that you've issued a protection order that violates my rights. And instead of removing it and giving me my family, you decided you were going to continue to harass me, intimidate me, violate my privacy, and pay people to cause me pain and suffering because you, those elected or appointed to office, cannot accept that you are violating the laws of the United States. Now, as an American citizen, <laughs> if I was a soldier in the army and I was to get shot in the head while fighting a war, pow, <laughs> all that I would need to do is tell those other soldiers where I wanted my estate to go. <laughs> Now, it could be that we need to pull out the Army's military jurisdiction when they have to actually defend Americans. Right. Now, you kidnapped my sons. You violated my rights. When does the United States military actually have to support and defend the Constitution of the United States? Now, I know, you're a sheriff, you're a police chief, you're one of these that have a badge on, and you're thinking to yourself, well, the Army would never show up in a county. <laughs> the Army would never actually have to do what the Constitution says. I mean, all those soldiers, and there's like a half a million sailors, and there's all types of individuals in the Air Force, and they, they've got like 1.2 million, the total number of actors of duty military personnel that their whole job is to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. At what point is it that I say, well, it looks to me like those that are legally liable for the enforcement of the law have refused to enforce the laws. <laughs> Now, it's been a while since the United States military has actually had to step into <laughs> local jurisdictions and say, well, uh, actually, you're violating the rights of American citizens. 
<laughs> you violated the privacy because you hacked their computers because you have to know what they're doing and what they're saying. <laughs> you cloned American citizens when you did not have the legal right to clone any American citizen. Oh! <laughs> At some point, I would think that the jurisdiction of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and the National Guard <laughs> would come into play when those that are elected and appointed to office don't do what they have sworn. Now, I emailed, in fact, I put it on my Facebook yesterday. I found an old Dropbox account where I had 1.75 gigabytes of various documents that I hadn't looked at for months and months and months and months. <laughs> and I found out, you know, I'm the one that actually contacted CID. <laughs> now, when I inform those in the military that I want them to enforce my constitutional rights, at what point do they actually respond? Because I didn't get any emails from them. Oh, you mean that time when they contacted the prosecuting attorney's office and said, we want you to watch Paul Budnick because we have some concerns about his, well, mental well-being. <laughs> But when I'm the one that's having my rights violated, it could be that the military's been watching those in Clallam County. <laughs> now, the military always strategizes. You know, understand how military intelligence works. They're all like, well, if this happens and that happens and this happens and that happens and this happens and that happens, they're constantly running that whopper. I tell you what, they got some supercomputers in the Pentagon. <laughs> Now, I'm kind of thinking, pff, at some point, <laughs> the actual military of the United States is going to have to invade local counties and take over so as to make sure that the constitutional rights of Americans are enforced. Now, you could be a sheriff, an undersheriff, sitting there kind of scratching yourself, asking, well, I don't see the Army here. I don't see them. Nope. But they couldn't be on you. I mean, the army doesn't have any clones. No! <laughs> what? You... Oh. What? <laughs> um, I'm going to call you back. Yeah.